Have you ever considered why some aircraft have incredibly long and thin wings, while others look like oversized guided missiles? Well, it has to do with something called aspect ratio. Essentially, aspect ratio can be defined as the ratio of the wingspan to the mean cord of a wing. It is a measure of how long and slender a wing is. A high aspect ratio means that the length of the wing is around several times the width, and a low aspect ratio means the width is much closer to the overall length. So why does that matter in aircraft design? Well, let's look at some of the benefits of high aspect ratio wings. These wings have less of something called induced drag. This is the drag caused by the wingtip vortices that result from the pressure difference between the upper and lower surfaces of the wing. Induced drag is proportional to the lift generated by the wing and inversely proportional to the aspect ratio. That might sound like a lot, but we can expand on that by looking at the full theoretical equation here. CL is the coefficient of lift. A is aspect ratio, and E is a span efficiency factor with a range from 0 to 1. So this span efficiency factor, also called Oswald's efficiency factor, has to do with the lift distribution of the wing based on the wing plan form, or overall shape, as viewed from above. Theoretically, an elliptical wing has a completely even lift distribution and a span efficiency factor of 1, which essentially means it's the most efficient wing out of all the different wing plan form shapes. But most wings are more rectangular in nature, and they have a value that's closer to around 0.7. One of the reasons why aircraft like the Supermarine Spitfire had such a high speed and performance is due to this fact, that it had an elliptical wing shape. So this theoretical equation is all well and good, but is it actually real? Can we actually test it? Well, uh, yes. Using these wings with four different aspect ratios, uh, we've got 7, 5, 4, and 3. We're going to experimentally test how much drag and lift each one is producing and find out which one really is the optimal and see if this equation holds up. In the footage, you can see that the high aspect ratio wings have a much flatter glide and a much larger, which means a much larger lift to drag ratio. So yes, this equation does appear to be correct. So what all this essentially means is that the high aspect ratio wings can produce the same lift, but with lower drag that a low aspect ratio wing can. This is why long range airliners such as the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 have high aspect ratio wings around 10 to 12. Some other examples of airplanes of high aspect ratio wings are gliders, which is due to their need of a long flight time to increase the chance of catching thermal updrafts to stay in flight. Now we can look at some of the drawbacks of high aspect ratio wings. A longer wing has more bending stress and torsion for a given load than a shorter wing, and therefore requires more strength and stiffness to withstand these forces. So, having a heavier wing means that less weight can be allocated to other key aspects of the aircraft. High aspect ratio wings also give aircraft a much lower roll rate due to the increased inertia. Having a much lower roll rate will reduce the overall maneuverability and agility of the aircraft. Some examples of airplanes with low aspect ratio wings are fighter jets such as the General Dynamics F-16 and Lockheed Martin F-22. On the other hand, Supersonic aircraft such as the Concorde and SR-71 Blackbird have ultra-low aspect ratio wings, values of around 1.5 to 2, because they need to reduce the drag at very high speeds. So as we can see, aspect ratio is definitely a very important factor in airplane design. There's no one optimal value for all situations. Each airplane has a different purpose and a different necessary trade-off between the benefits and drawbacks of a high or low aspect ratio wing. So maybe the next time you see an airplane flying, maybe try to guess its aspect ratio and what it applies for its performance. And I hope you uh, learned something new today.